Hi, my name is David from Electric Teaching, and I'm going to show you how to do a Python code or a Python uh, file program and make it you do the quadratic formula and probably a little bit more than just the quadratic formula. Uh, first, I'd like to show you that I'm using PyScriptor. PyScriptor I got from uh, the uh, uh, code.google.com and I found PyScriptor here. It's a, uh, as it says here, an integrated development environment uh, for using Python, and it basically replaces using Edit Idle that we used to do, or I used to do. And I'm using Python 2.5. Uh, it's a somewhat popular version. I like 2.5 because I can make it into executables, uh, but Python 2.5 does have some limitations, so I'll be sure to avoid those. Let's come back. All right, if I'm in PyScriptor and I want to start a new file, click up here, and we're going to start a new, I guess, module is what they're called. can't remember if I set it up to put my name in here already, but it might be just working off a previous uh, version that I've worked on, or excuse me, a previous file that I've worked on. Let's see. I'm going to do a quadratic formula. This is just a comment area by the pound signs. And um, it sets me up, and this is what I like about PyScriptor. You'll see several things that I like, but it already sets me up with the default basic way of running any type of Python programming. Uh, pro Python likes to do an if name equal main and run a, a main, or I can even make this, in fact, I will. I like to do this my main def uh, defined or uh, function, and which we will define up here. I like to call it my main just to make sure. People don't get confused that this word means that it has to be main here. Um, we don't need to pass right there. Pass just means to skip it um, in case you're not using it. Uh, what I'm going to do is start to import first a math library. I need to use a square root function to do the quadratic formula. Therefore, I'm going to have to import the math library. Okay. I'm also going to have to uh, give it a pause moment uh, to delay and uh, be able to see the screen. And so I'm going to run, um, oh, excuse me, uh, yes, time. I'm going to import the time library. And it does various things. Now immediately you can see what PyScriptor does that I enjoy. PyScriptor here puts, uh, uh, brings up pop-up windows that not only explain like what the next things you could put in or what you might be typing in, but all the different little things you can do with it as well. Um, next thing, let's put a little comment. We need to import, we need to ask the user, the person using this code or this program, and for the quadratic, uh, uh, form, uh, excuse me, the quadratic functions, coefficients, the A, B, and C. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to uh, be assigning variables here. So assign variables. A, B, and C from the quadratic function. And we like to do this with, let's see, need to tab over once. Don't forget, Python works by tabbing over and making it an outline form. That way, we don't have to worry about additional syntax like most other program languages. The colon here means that everything that's tabbed over or in outline form is going to be within this function called my main. So make sure I am tabbed over appropriately. Let's do variable a. a is going to equal, whoops, a little smart for PyScriptor there, thought I knew what I was going to do there. a equals full, um, not float, I'm going to be doing that in a minute, raw input. This is a neat way for, you can see PyScriptor is asking or showing that it anticipating this. This is a neat way to use a prompt. So now I'm going to do raw input. I'm going to put a single quote and notice it pops up automatically with both quotes, PyScriptors, anticipating what I'm doing. This is a nice development area for us. What is the coefficient, the number in front of the variables, coefficient of the x, I'm going to show it by this way, the x squared term, which we are going to call a, and so we'll end it with a question mark. So everything that's in this yellow color or this uh, uh, um, off color here, this is um, in a single quote, and it is going to be the text that appears in the prompt window or the prompt environment. Um, 
we can make this be a pop-up window if we're working in a GUI environment, but most of the time this usually runs or I teach kids just to instantly, students, excuse me, to instantly just run this in the basic command line of Python, which is basically their Python interpreter down here in this area, but we'll show you how it looks in a second. Now, I never like to um, uh, retype things that are already typed in correctly and very similar to what I need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the first two and or the first one and paste it in twice and change the key variables. For instance, b and c are going to be equal to the coefficient of the x term b and not a coefficient, but what is the constant constant what is the constant of the function? We can even get a little more clear here. It doesn't hurt to have a little bit of a teaching moment in that, in my opinion. Okay, now we're going to ask for the A, Bs, and Cs. So what happens is the pop-up window will come up three times and ask for these values. Now, if we leave them as they are, they are often considered strings when they come in. I believe that is the case, and I'm not positive on that, but I do know that I need to float the number. I'm, as the more I think about it, the more I think I'm saying this right. When it asks for an input, it doesn't know that uh, the number is a value, and so it thinks it's just some sort of symbol like a letter. And so what we need to do is we need to tell it it's not a string. It is a, an actual value that needs to be um, turned into a real rational number, both a real and rational number. And what I'm doing is, is I'm taking the original assigned A and putting it back into itself after I tell it it is a real number. If I put in 2, it's probably going to put 2.0 to show that it's, I keep saying real, but a rational number. Rational being something that is can be made into a fraction. So 2, um, and what they do is a float means they're going to put it in decimal form, 2.0. Need to do this one more time, and I'm tired of typing it, so I'm going to be sure that I've got it exactly right, and I'll copy and paste and put in the key letters here, the key variables. All right, A, B, and C are now actual numbers. So we've got the assigned variables set up. We've asked the user for them. Now we need to plug and chug them, as I like to say. We want to put them in the quadratic formula. So let's put a little comment line here. We are going to uh, execute, execute the quadratic formula. Okay, to find, again, let's not lose a teaching moment here, to find um, the x-intercepts of the graph, or the zeros, as, I, as they're called, or the roots. Okay, and they're also called the solutions, too, if we are setting this equal to zero. So that's very important to know how, how helpful this can be. Um, Let's make a new variable. I'm going to call it x. I was going to call it x1, but it, there you go. PyScriptor seems to anticipate what I want to do sometimes too much, but that's okay. I still love it. x1 is equal to, okay, the quadratic formula. It's got a plus or minus in it. We're going to have to do this twice since plus and minus are two completely different things. We're going to put this into two variables, x1 and x2. I always teach my students to do the formula in, in two different fractions, negative b, divide sign, that's forward slash, parentheses, remember you have to use parentheses for doing the calculations uh, when dividing by multiple things because otherwise your uh, uh, the PEMDAS rules basically will say only divide the first one. So um, I'm going to divide by 2a, so it's negative b divided by 2a. And then plus or minus, in this case, we're going to do plus. We're going to do the square root. That's the math library. So I'm going to call up the math library. Let me space this out so it's just nice and visible. Extra spaces. Most, most programs don't like this. Extra spaces do not bother Python. Uh, math, S-Q-R-T. That's the command to pull up the square root. And I'm going to put in parentheses of, let's see, negative, no, excuse me, B 
squared. To do b squared, we're going to do b shift 8 twice. That is star star. With Python, you have to use star star for an exponent. And it's also important, unlike the TI-83, if you're used to using that, you can't just put 2 and an a next to each other and expect the code to understand you mean multiply. That's an algebra rule that's pulled nicely put into the uh, TI-83 environment, the graphing calculator environment. All right, b squared minus 4 star a star c. Oh, yep, that's perfect. So let's see, negative b divided by 2a, and then we got mass square root b squared. The square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by, again, parentheses, two items here, 2 shift 8 or star a. There we go. That is the first of the roots or the x-intercepts or the zeros. And I can never say that enough times with my students. We're going to do x2 as our second variable, and this will be the minus part of the quadratic formula. Negative b. Well, this is really crazy. I know. I'm going to copy this. Again, if I've typed it correctly one time, why take a chance on making a typo? The only thing I need to do is change the plus to a minus, and it'll give me the extra root, or zero, or x-intercept. Last thing we need to do is print our output. We're just going to use the simple print command, kind of like a raw input command. It's just going to show it in the mat and the Python interpreter, or the Python kind of command line, as I kind of see it as. And uh, let's just see, print solution. And all we're going to do, that was my comment, print. And we're going to say print, and I like to put in some text here. So we're going to put in a single quote again for text. The x dash intercepts are, and I'm going to put a space, close quote, print, uh, excuse me, comma. Now, the, everything in the quote is going to be interpreted as text to put on the screen. Without the quote, it would be thinking the the and the x-intercepts and the word r would all be variables with values behind it. It's very important to understand that in programming, that everything's numbers to it. So it thinks all these letters or numbers are commands. So it thinks it would think all these new words would be variables. And so that's why we got to put it in single quotes. So let it know just to make it a string of text, as we say x1 comma x2 are the two values I want it to print to the screen right after the words. Hopefully this works. Let's see, I need to save it. Let's space it out down here a little bit. All right, so save it. I'm just going to throw it into a folder, any folder of your choice. I'm going to call mine quad form. It's my little word that I've called it ever since programming it on the TI-83. And, and let's try running it. Up in PyScriptor, this little green arrow will run it. This is, uh, you can also do it, it looks like a control F9, but this is very similar to idle's uh, F5, I believe. So let's run it and see what happens. We get a pop up window. Perfect. I'm going to test um, x squared minus 4. Should have positive and negative 2 as intercepts. So let's do x squared minus 4. There's a 1 x squared or a 1 in front of the x squared for the coefficient of the a term. And the coefficient of the x term, or the linear term, is not there. So 0 must have been the coefficient. And c is a negative 4. Negative 4. Okay, it did work. And if you look down into the interpreter down here, it shows the x-intercepts are 2.0 and negative 2.0. Let me show you exactly what it looks like when you just open it out of the folder. So I'm going to go to my folder where I've saved it, and I'm going to just double-click on it. Now, the only thing you need is Python. Any version of Python, I believe, would work. And so if your friend, you want to email this to a friend or put it onto another computer, you just have to be sure that Python is on it. In another uh, video lesson, I'm probably going to show you how to turn it into an executable, and then you can send it to all your friends. All right, quad form. I'm going to double-click on it. It's going to bring up the, um, uh, what I call the command line, but it looks like it's called the Python interpreter here. And I'm going to put in the same exact function, quadratic function, a 1x squared, a 0x, and a negative 4 constant. And, whoa, I don't know if you saw it, but I think it did work, which reminds me. 
I forgot to tell the screen or the program to pause a little bit. And that's why I brought in the time in library. Because we're just going to do a little time sleep command. We're going to say time, and I'm not tabbed correctly. Again, make sure you're tabbed correctly. Time, and I'm going to tell it to just do a sleep, which means pause. And I'm going to say, and you can see right here, it says it's going to do it in seconds. How about, you know, five seconds? And if you want, make it longer before you give it out to friends or make it shorter. It's up to you. Save it. I'd like, to, like you to see it from the folder, not from running it within Python. And it also looks a little different when you run it from within idle as well, just so you know. All right, same ones. 1, x squared, 0, x, and a negative 4. And it says the x intercepts r to negative 2. Perfect. It's working well, and it disappeared five seconds later. Uh, I'm David from Electric Teaching, and I will do a part two of this where we will put in everything about the quadratic formula that I can think of, at least from my teaching standpoint, of uh, this subject. And uh, hopefully we'll see you there.